Hi, everyone. Welcome to the final episode of the Dans of the 2020 session. I'm Dan McKay. I'm here with my colleague, Dan Boyd. Uh, we survived the rather exhausting march to the end. Um, but a lot of the most important work happened in the final 12 hours. Yeah, I just had this uh, crazy dream that I was trapped in this building for uh, 30 days, and then I woke up and it actually was true. Um, it was certainly a sprint to the finish here at the, at the session. A lot of bills, including the budget, were kind of in limbo going into the final 24 hours. Uh, in the end, the House and Senate both agreed on a version of the budget, sent it up to the governor's office. Also a really big uh, capital outlay or public uh, infrastructure bill also got approval. So um, there was a lot of kind of skirmishes over rules and procedures and things like that. But in the end, uh, you know, a lot of legislators said, well, we got, uh, got done what we had to get done and uh, we're happy to kind of get out of here. Yeah, so this was a session where a, a lot of big ticket items did get through, um, big Democratic priorities uh, primarily um, on gun control, uh, education spending, uh, the, the beginnings perhaps of a new scholarship program for college students, uh, pension solvency, uh, a, a whole host of things got, got through. I think, uh, you know, the governor, it kind of illustrated how happy she was with the session. She said, uh, she joked yesterday that she wished it hadn't ended, um, which prompted some pretty big groans from the <laughs> legislators who were, who were exhausted, obviously. Uh, but looking ahead, we've got, um, you know, all 112 legislative seats are going to be on the ballot. Um, wh what do you see as sort of the outlook in the next uh, Yeah, I think certainly the uh, attention will shift to the election season. Like you said, uh, all 112 legislative seats are up for election. Uh, uh, the governor has until March 11th to sign most of the bills passed, especially all the ones passed in the final days. So we'll be following up on that, which bills she signs and if she might veto any of them. Um, so that's something also to keep an eye on. Total of 88 bills were passed. So like you said, maybe not as many as in past years, but certainly some pretty uh, weighty and, and significant ones. Uh, another issue to watch out for is the governor has line item veto power over budget bills. Um, so she and her staff will almost certainly be going through uh, the spending plans that were approved. There was a lot of uh, talk late in the session about whether New Mexico was spending too much of the, the oil boom uh, revenue windfall or uh, if more of it should be held back in reserves, that's sort of a, a question that we will see uh, play out over the next few weeks as the governor acts on these on these bills. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's certainly something to, to watch for and to see kind of whether revenue levels uh, do end up meeting kind of projected levels, especially when it comes to oil production and oil prices. So um, the session may be done, but certainly our coverage isn't. And um, we've enjoyed bringing all the action from the roundhouse to you. and. Uh, Thanks to everyone for, for paying attention and reading our stories. Yeah, we, we are very thankful for everyone who supports local journalism uh, through a subscription or clicking on our stories. Um, thank you, and we hope to have some more uh, videos and a lot more coverage for you later this year.